So in this video, we're diving into a super interesting injury, which is a rupture to the quadriceps tendon or the patella tendon at the knee joint. If you're ready, let's dive in. Hey guys, Khaled here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. So where better to start when looking at any injury than our 3D anatomy model? So guys, here we have our 3D anatomy model. So let's go ahead and dive into the quadriceps muscles, which are pivotal to the quadriceps and patella tendon, which we're going to go through later. So the quadriceps, as you can imagine, is a group of four different muscles that all join together to form the extensor mechanism of the knee by all inserting into the quadriceps tendon, which becomes the patella tendon, the two key tendons that we're focusing on today. So what are these four muscles? We have the vastus lateralis located on the anterolateral side of the thigh, the vastus intermedius on the anterior surface of the femur, and the vastus medialis on the anteromedial side of the thigh. Running over the top of these is the rectus femoris muscle, considered to be the most powerful of the four. Now, as we can see, these muscles all join and merge into the quadriceps tendon at the distal thigh, which then merges with the patella tendon in order to insert into the tibial tuberosity of the tibia. So why do we have this difference between the quadriceps tendon and the patella tendon? Well, it's all linked to the patella bone itself because the patella or the kneecap, as we can see on the screen here, is actually encapsulated within that tendon complex. We have the quadriceps tendon running over the superior aspect of the patella and the patella tendon running over the mid to distal aspect of it, as you can see on the screen. And therefore, the distinct difference is that the quadriceps tendon actually attaches to the anterior superior patella and the patella tendon attaches to the distal patella so that it kind of separates between the two. This is important when we think about the function of the patella because the patella acts as a lever point for which the quadriceps and patella tendon to run over the top of so that when we extend the knee, it creates that lever in order to extend the tibia on the femur to cause knee extension. So that's the anatomy. And unfortunately, we do find that patients do suffer in life a quadriceps tendon rupture or a patella tendon rupture where they sever that tendon, which therefore completely disrupts the extensive mechanism of the knee, therefore extremely limiting the patient's ability to walk, to move and of course extend their knee. So next, let's dive into some of the key subjective signs as to who presents with a quadriceps or a patella tendon rupture. So we're principally thinking of individuals here who have had a trauma, something that's going to cause enough force to sever that tendon. Examples I've seen in the past include people falling down the stairs, perhaps where their knee has folded underneath them where the knee is in full flexion, putting those tendons on a maximal stretch in order to cause that rupture. But the other example that I have seen in the past is people who might be in the gym who are trying to lift really, really heavy weights, but might have weaker or more vulnerable tendons. So who or what might make those tendons vulnerable? Well, first of all, we consider those who are older because as we get older, our tendons become more degenerative. So I'm principally thinking of those in the 40 and over age bracket. We also know that those who have a long and significant history of smoking are likely to have weaker tendons. But a really common story that I think really separates those patients who might rupture and who don't are those who have a long history of using anabolic steroids. Of course, because these might also be the individuals who are trying to be in the gym lifting really, really heavy weights. And that's because we know that over a longer period of time, anabolic steroids affect the organization and the makeup of that tendon, which can make it weaker. So certainly listen out for that story. Okay, 
So how do we diagnose these injuries? Well, first of all, listen for your patient's history of trauma. There is very likely to be a correlation between a high force trauma that had enough force in order to sever one of those tendons. Then listen out for whether the patient heard a pop sensation at the time of their injury and whether they had any extensive bruising, particularly over the anterior surface or the front of their knee where those tendons are located. Then, of course, listen for difficulty in weight bearing. In fact, if your patient has ruptured one of those tendons, they probably won't be able to put any weight through their leg because they don't have the strength in order to do so. Now, objectively, a really big indicator of one of these ruptures is if your patient is unable to produce a straight leg raise movement when lying in a supine position on the bed. And that's because in order to produce a straight leg raise, we need a fully intact extensor mechanism at the knee, which includes the quadriceps tendon, the patella and the patella tendon. So as a result, if your patient is unable to reproduce a straight leg raise movement after their injury, we must consider each of those three diagnoses before we go any further. So on to treatment. How are these injuries managed in practice? Well, in the vast majority of cases, except for particularly exceptional circumstances, your patient will probably need surgery, either to repair the tendon complex or to reattach the tendon complex, because if they don't have that extensor mechanism intact, they're going to be unable to weight bear at all. Now, I have to be honest, the road to recovery is quite extensive and long following that surgery. First of all, your patient is likely to be in a hinged knee brace for the first six to eight weeks, which might be locked at zero degrees extension in order to limit the amount of bending they can do at their knee. Because if the knee does bend too early and it elongates the tendon, it reduces that tendon's tensile strength in the future. What you may commonly find is that physiotherapy can allow us to try and get gradual increases in knee flexion from week six onwards, which is when the hinge knee brace may be removed. Your consultant may aim for something like 90 degrees of knee flexion after 10 to 12 weeks and may not want full flexion of the knee until around 20 weeks post-surgery. I've even seen some consultants who once the patient has got to something like 120 degrees, they may say, don't bother pushing any further. Enough is enough. Now, of course, the patient's weight bearing will also be affected too. You may find that in the first four weeks following their surgery, the patient may be advised to non-weight bear at all. And then between weeks four and six, they'll be able to weight bear, but only with the hinged knee brace in place and with the knee locked at full extension. After six weeks, and providing the patient is able to demonstrate enough quadriceps strength, it might be that at that stage the brace is removed and the patient can start partially weight bearing before gradually moving themselves on to fully weight bearing under consultant guidance. And then in terms of rehab, as you can imagine, it's going to be about quads, quads and more quad strengthening. So in the early stages, we might be working on exercises like a straight leg raise movement with our patient and a static quadriceps contraction, particularly because the brace is on and locked in that fully extended position. Once range of movement is allowed to progress towards 90 degrees flexion, you may consider something like an inner range quadriceps movement or sit to stand exercises if your patient can weight bear sufficiently. As time goes on, further down the line, we start progressing to single leg activity, perhaps something like single leg standing with reaching or perhaps some single leg calf raises. And from there, we gradually progress to include more flexion activities like lunges, like squats and like a leg press, all of which we can build up the amount of weight we use as we go. So guys, it has to be said, management of quadriceps tendon and patella tendon ruptures can be long. But as physios, it's an amazing injury to treat because you can really help your patient get incredible results. So if you've enjoyed this video, please support us by smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel for all our best updates. Remember, you can also check us out on Instagram at Clinical Physio and on our website clinicalphysio.com where we've got loads of brilliant resources for physiotherapists. I'm Khalid. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon here on Clinical Physio.